Well, remember that uh, the limit of a product is the product of the limit. So it's no surprise that Leibniz thought that if this is the case, then perhaps the derivative of a product is a product of derivative. But uh, a simple example can, can prove, uh, can show you that this assumption is wrong. So let's write first as a fact that um, the product, the, deri the derivative of the product the derivative of a product is not equal to the product of uh, the derivatives okay to uh, to give an example <coughs> compare uh, the uh, derivative of uh, x to the fifth to the derivative of the product x squared times x cube equals x to the fifth. Okay. So we can see right away that if we uh, work this out, d dx of x to the fifth, I'll use Leibniz notation, by the power rule is 5x to the fourth. Now d dx of x squared is 2x, and d dx of x cubed is 3 x squared and if we do the product of the derivatives you come up with 6x cubed and this is different than it's not equal to uh, 5x to the fourth so very quickly, Leibniz realized that this assumption was incorrect. So w what is the rule? Well, uh, different notation. So uh, let's start with something like that. If, uh, if we let a function f of x equals the product of two functions, let's say u and v of x, then uh, we have the following rule. Uh, the simplest notation will be uh, if we take the derivative uh, u times v prime, like so. Well, this is, of course, f prime, right? Then it will be u prime v plus u v prime. This is a, the, a very compact form. Um, of course, you can use the uh, the uh, Leibniz notation and say d dx of u times v, like so, equals du dx times v plus u dv dx. That's another way to express that. Okay. Of course, some people like to use f and g, so it will be the same thing. But instead of u and v, u and v, you have f and g. Okay, so this is this is it, uh, and let's run through series of examples to demonstrate this particular problem. For the first example, let's find the derivative of a function f of x equals x e to the x. Okay. So in this solution, we're going to say that um, f of x equals u times v, and of course u equals x v, v equals e to the x, u prime will be 1, and uh, v prime will be 
well e to the x okay, let me erase uh, remove something here a little bit of housekeeping all right so now having these uh, four components u u prime v v prime we can uh, use this uh, the, the expression on top so <coughs> Uh, we're going to say that u times v prime. Again, just remind yourself, u v u prime v plus u times v prime. Okay. Now pl place everything. So it would be 1, which is u prime, times v, which is e to the x, plus u, which is h, times v prime, which is e to the x. Okay. And factor out e to the x. And I, liked, I like to keep e to the x at the end. Uh, and this is it. What I'll do in the next example, I'm going to continue with this particular function. Uh, and uh, I'll ask you, or ask myself in this case, find the nth derivative. of f of x equals x e to the x. Now, if you look at this question, nth derivative, I mean, I, you, we saw yesterday and uh, perhaps the day and before yesterday as well uh, that, uh, for instance, the first derivative of the position function or the displacement function is the velocity and then the second derivative of the displacement is the derivative of the velocity, which is the acceleration. And we realize that the third derivative of the displacement is the jerk, which is the second derivative of the velocity and the first derivative of the acceleration. So by now you're convinced that we can take also fourth derivative, fifth derivative, or nth derivative. We, if, you know, as long as we didn't, uh, we, we didn't zero out the function, we can take, continue to, to differentiate. So, by looking at the nth derivative, not the specific, it means that the probably we're going to see a pattern here, something that, a thing that repeats itself and allow us to kind of uh, hy come up with a hypothesis, what is the nth derivative. Indeed, we're going to make a little, some observation here. So, uh, we know that the first derivative, f prime, right? f prime, is 1 plus x times e to the x we, from the previous example. Now, what we're going to say, we're going to say that this equals to u times v, the new, new u and v, where u in this case equals 1 plus x. And immediately I'll say, OK, if this is the case, then u prime equals the derivative of 1 is 0. So it's equal to 1. And v is e to the x. And therefore, the derivative v prime is also e to the x. And now we're going to say that f uh, double prime is the derivative of the new u times v. And again, the formula or the rule said it's u prime v plus u v prime. I keep repeating that. So maybe this uh, rule will occupy a vacant uh, memory cell in your brain. So and we stay there. So now we just replace this thing. And u prime, I'm looking here, it's 1. v is e to the x plus u, which is 1 plus x, times v, uh, which is times v prime, I'm sorry, which is e to the x. And now I see that if I factor e to the x, I have 1 plus 1 plus x. Or I'll end up having 2 plus x times e to the x. So just based on this observation, we go before we go next to the third derivative, can you guess what will be the third derivative of x e to the x? Yeah, yeah. And all we need to do is verify that, and we are pretty much safe to uh, assume. Again, this is part of the process of induction. Uh, but again, I, I'm not going to do the formal because we are not uh, 
we, we ask to find, not to prove. So uh, let's look at, uh, uh, so f double prime equals 2 plus x times e to the x. Again, I'll call it a u and v, and no u and v where u equals 2 plus x, and therefore u prime equals 1, and v equals e to the x, and then before v prime equals e to the x, and therefore f triple time equals <laughs> the derivative of uh, u times v, and again it's u prime v plus u v prime, and now replace u prime is 1, v is e to the x plus u, 2 plus x, v prime is e to the x, and 1 plus 2 is 3, and so f n, the nth derivative will be equals n plus x e to the x. Good here? Happy?